Welcome to Honest News. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Oh, thank, thank you for your support, Honest News Network. I've been born If you have eyes to see, you can see the tares being sown among the wheat. It's really something to be not a part of something and to stand outside something and see from the outside. Not everybody can see the tares among the wheat being sown. Jesus says it was while men slept, the enemy deliberately came and sowed tares among the wheat. That's not my message, but... We're seeing that if we have eyes to see. Thank God you can see it. But thank God you're not a part of it. Thank God that you are not a wheat and you're not a tear. You say, well, Brother Joseph, what's wrong with being a wheat? Well, if you're a wheat, you're going to end up in the Great Tribulation. <clears throat> because the barley is going to be harvested long before the wheat. And the first of the first fruits is going to come out of the barley. So if you think you're one of those that's the wheat, you don't understand when the wheat is harvested. Those are coming out of great tribulation having washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. These are the, these are the foolish virgins that had no oil. They had no oil in their vessels. Are you listening? They're going to end up in great tribulation, and they're going to be beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And it's sad how few really understand truth in this hour. I've seen people that don't know the difference between the wheat and the barley. They think all believers are wheat. So sad to see how few really love the truth today, study the truth. So sad. But they'll put all their effort and time into something in this world, but they give very little time to God's word. That's sad. Just think in your own life. How much time do you really give to the Lord? How much time do you really spend in his word throughout the day? How often do you meditate on the Word of God. Amen? How often? How often do you think about, about the Lord? How often do you think about what the Lord is doing? If you're not looking up every single day you're in trouble. We need to be looking unto the author and the finisher of our faith. Keep our eyes on Jesus. The more so, 
as we see that day approaching, folks. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. It's easy to lose sight of the Lord when you get your eyes on the problem. Just ask Peter. Amen? Just, just ask Peter. Go look, go look and see what Peter has to say about it. He wrote about it. Read the first Peter and second Peter and learn what he learned. You get your eyes on the problem, you get in trouble. Amen? Don't look at the problem, look at the promise. And that may sound so simple and can even possibly sound cliche, but it's not. That's what it's all about. It's about keeping our eyes on Jesus. And as I was sharing with you about the dragon, his objective is to get you to take your eyes off Jesus, to get your attention. That's what the dragon, that's what Satan is, that's his objective. And ultimately to destroy you, but to get your attention off God first. Amen. Remember this, the same storm, the same storm that Peter was experiencing when he got out of the boat is the same storm when he began to sink. The only thing that made a difference is the Bible says the wind became boisterous. It must have begun to blow against Peter. I want you to understand, from the time that you are saved, you're going to be dealing with the same storm. It's not different storms. It's the same storm. And every now and then, the wind becomes boisterous. But if you'll keep your eyes on Jesus, amen? If you keep your eyes on Jesus, you can walk on the word. Amen. Walk on the word. Trust in the word. Lean on the word. Praise God. He is the word. Amen. He's the word. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10, if you like to follow in the reading of God's word. I, the Lord, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, I, the Lord, search the heart. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God in heaven, for your many blessings. We thank you, God, for your long-suffering, your patience with us. We thank you, God, that you are willing to work with us, that you are willing to train us, to equip us, 
to make something out of us, Lord. To give us, Lord, an expected end. We thank you, God, that what you've begun in our hearts and our lives, you will complete it. You will finish that work, Lord, if we won't quit. If we won't give up, if we won't draw back, Lord, we ask God that you bless, anoint this message as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Again, even as the horsemen rides the horse. He's got the reins in his hand. So the Lord tries the reins. The word reins here has to do with our heart, has to do with our emotions. Does the Lord have full control over our heart and emotions. Does he? Do we become afraid at times because the Lord does not have full control over our reins? We've got to give him full control, folks. Otherwise, we're going to be afraid. We're going to become fearful. Amen? You do well to give your heart to the Lord. You do well to give him full reign of your life. Give him the reins. Amen? Give God the reins. Don't be like a stubborn horse that does not have a bit in its mouth. Amen. I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, If you are not under the Lord's control, listen to me, you're out of control. Let me say that again. If you are not under the Lord's control, if he doesn't have the reins of your heart, you're out of control. The world today is becoming more and more out of control every day. And sadly, even some of God's people are not surrendering the reins to the Lord. I can handle it. I can do it. If anybody can do it, I can do it. Psalm chapter 139, verse 13. For thou hast possessed my reins. For thou hast possessed my reins. That word possessed has to do with redemption. For thou hast redeemed my reins. Praise God. Will you give God full possession of the reins of your heart, of every emotion, of every feeling? 
Give that to the Lord. You'll be glad if you do. Are you listening? Go back with me to Jeremiah 17. Notice the verse just before that verse. I, the Lord, search the heart, try the reins. It says, the heart is deceitful. That's right. If the Lord has not changed your heart, purified your heart, cleansed your heart, the heart unconverted is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know the heart? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. God will test you. He'll test your heart to him if you're going to obey. Amen. He will test the reins to make sure that you Respond accordingly. Thank God he does. Even as a horseman is always testing the horse to see if the horse is under, its, under his control. You to make sure that this horse is not got a mind of its own today. Amen? Sometimes we get a mind of our own, don't we? Want to do our own thing. But how many know the Lord is faithful to break us? Amen? I don't know if you've ever seen a horse that's unbroken, but it's a mess. I'm sure that horse thinks it's free. Amen. The old in, the uh, some of the Indians they used to I think the Sioux Indians they used to uh, break the horses in the water. What a beautiful type that is. The water being a type of the word. Yeah, they they would put the horses down into they would ride the horses down into some deep water. And they would break the horse in the water. And then you see the cowboys come along and think they're going to break horses outside the water. And they're going to fight and strong arm the horse. And instead of having a happy horse that's happy that it's been broken, you have an angry horse, bitter, because it's been forced to be broken. You understand what I'm saying to you? I'm not saying we need to learn the way of the Indians. What I'm trying to tell you is there's an easier way than fighting and struggling to get people to obey God. Or to, for, your, for yourself to obey God. Amen. Again, like the water, the word. You see, the water provides a resistance to that horse. It doesn't have the ability to have all its strength. Water resists that horse. Amen. And we need that. 
We need that resistance. We don't need to just have so much freedom that we can just do whatever we want to do. We need the Lord to bring some restraint and some resistance in our lives. And what's he doing? He's slowly breaking us down, people. He, he allows us to be put in situations we can't get out of. What's that resistance? How come I can't get out of this situation? He's breaking you. The Lord's breaking you. And let me just say this. If he doesn't break you, you'll be destroyed. If you don't fall on the rock, the rock's going to fall on you. Because a horse that's not broken is useless. I may know that. What good is a horse that's not broken? What good is it? What, what good is that horse? What's it going to do? Just take up space? If it can't be used. Amen. There's a reason why the saints are returning in judgment with the Lord riding on white horses. There's a reason for that. Why God chose horses. There's so much to learn in so little time, people. So little time. But the Lord says, I try the reins of your heart. Just like the reins on a horse. Amen. Revelation 19, verse 11. John says, I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. Whew. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His, his eyes, his eyes, his eyes, were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The Word of God. His name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Who are they following? The Word. The Word. Amen? They're following the Word. Clothed in fine linen, white, and clean. Where are they going? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And on his vesture, and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. This is the supper of the Lamb. The great supper of the Lamb. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Some are not going to make it to the wedding. But it says there were armies that followed him. Some are only going to make it to the marriage feast, 
the marriage supper, to return with the Lord in vengeance. Amen? But they're not going to make it to the union to become one with him. That you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them, flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Did you hear that? Let's read that again. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. They're going to try to make war with God and his army. And that's something. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. The Lord is returning. The sword that he is going to fight with is the words of his mouth. Amen. Praise God, people. Praise the Lord. Job, chapter 39, verse 19. Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? Remember, we're returning with the Lord on white horses. Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? The Lord is rebuking Job. Canst thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostrils is terrible. Talking about the horse that you're going to be riding on. The glory of his nostrils is terrible. Coming with the Lord in vengeance, people, in fury. Don't you think the rider should match the horse that it's riding? If the horse is terrible, if the horse is not afraid, he poth in the valley and rejoiceth in his strength. Talking about a horse. He goeth on to meet the armed men. If you're faithful, that horse that you're riding will be faithful. Amen. Listen to, listen to this. This is the horse. He mocketh at fear. He laughs at fear. He makes fun of fear. <laughs> and... He is not a frightened. 
You're going to have to be like that horse, folks. You're riding on one of those white horses. You're going to have to be like him. He mocketh at fear. He's not a frightened. Neither turneth he back from the sword. Amen. Are you like that horse, fearless? Do you mock fear? Do you make fun of fear? Oh, I feel the presence of God. Amen. We're supposed to be like Jesus, but I want you to understand something. There's something about these horses that God wants us to learn. We're going to ride on those horses. We need to understand that we need to be fearless, courageous. Oh, my. He mocketh at fear. He's not affrightened. Neither turneth he back from the sword. Amen. The quiver rattleth against him the glittering spear, and the shield. This is a horse in battle. This is a horse that's being rid... They're riding these horses straight into battle. No, it's not like today. We're talking about horse to horse, man to man. They're running right towards each other. That's how they used to war. You've seen the old, the old uh, Dark Age movies, medieval movies, where they come straight at each other with their swords, their spears, their shields. The saints of God are returning with the Lord in, in fury, fierce. You understand what I'm trying to help you to understand here, folks? You can't pull your horse back. You can't be afraid. But let me just say this to you. You don't have to worry about that because you won't even be riding one of those horses if you're not ready. This is not superficial. These are real horses going into real battle. It says they're going to make war with the lamb. But how many know they're no match for the lamb and his army? There's no match. It's, it's ridiculous that they would even try to make war. But nonetheless, the Lord says, you want, you want war? You want to fight me? You don't know who you're up against. Amen? The world has never seen an army led by such a fierce king. Praise God, people. You better put away your fairy tale books. Better put away your fables because this is real. This is a real battle. This is real, people. Those armies that become one army following the word of God, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. The nations of the world will be gathered together against him. Amen. You will not be riding with the Lord if you're not ready. Any more than those that were sent back that did not go to battle with Gideon. Amen. God had Gideon send all the fearful home. He only kept 300. Trained them. The word retained there in Gideon is to train. To to actually uh, mimic Gideon says, when I do this, you do this. Almost like Simon says, 
You ever heard of that, Simon Says? Simon Says, do this. Well, it's not so much do this. It's, as, it's actually watch what I do and do as I do. Jesus says, I only do what I see the Father doing. This army that's following the word of God is one unit. It is one mind, one accord. You listening? There is no chism. There is no thrusting against one another. Amen. They will not break their ranks. They know their place and their position in the Lord. And they're fitted by the Lord in this battle. They're not where they don't belong. Amen. Praise God, people. Let's look at the picture here of the horse that you're riding. And I'm going to tell you right now, these are earthly horses that are being described here in Job. I have a feeling that the horses that we read about in Revelation are much more fierce, much more terrible than what we read in Job. It says, the horse swalloweth up the ground with fierceness and rage. Has anybody seen the wild horses out there? They paw in the valley. They snort. Amen. They're powerful, but nothing comparing to the horses that the saints of God shall ride. If those horses are fierce, should not the rider be? Amen. I don't think the world has even a clue who this king is that's returning in wrath. Amen. They want to see him as a baby in a manger. So sad. It says, Neither believeth he that it is the sound of the trumpet. What does that mean? Listen to the next verse. He saith among the trumpets, Ha! Ha! This is the horse, people. The one that laughs and mocks at fear. He hears the trumpets. He knows it's time for battle. He knows it's time for war. And he knows he's running into what could be, he could die. But he's not going to fail the rider. Head on into battle and the horses ha ha praise God he smelleth the battle afar off is that the way you are is that how, do you do you feel like that brothers and sisters when it comes to Riding with the Lord in vengeance upon the wicked? Are you getting ready for battle? The scripture says the Lord's going to sit in the heavens and laugh. He's going to laugh at the wicked. The only option they have is that they call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. 
It's their only option other than destruction. Surrender or die. Surrender or be destroyed. Amen. The warrior is coming riding on a horse. Fierce. He smells the battle afar off. He hears the trumpets and he laughs. Ha ha. Mmm. He smelleth the battle afar off. Does anybody out there know what I'm talking about? If you're a warrior, you know what this preacher's talking about. You're not afraid of the battle. You're looking forward to it. Bring it. Amen. And not just bring it. I'm coming. David hastened to the battle. David ran towards Goliath. Amen. The thunder of captains and the shouting. It says, the supper of the great God and the birds of the air, come eat the flesh of captains. My Lord and my God, people. Are you listening? Is anybody listening? This army is not going to be defeated. This army's not going to be overcome, but they shall overcome. They shall crush. In fact, they shall trample underfoot. Amen. If, if you're going to shrink back, listen, you're not going to be in that army. The Lord's putting together an army. Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness. Of gloominess a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them. Speaking of not Joel's army. This is the army that's returning with the word. Following the word. Are you listening? A fire devoureth before them. That fire is the word of God. That fire is the sword. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Sudden destruction. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction and nothing shall escape them. Are you listening? It says they shall not escape. Sudden destruction. The Lord is coming as a thief in the night when they're not looking for him. Amen. The appearance of the army that's following the Lord 
is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen so shall they run wide open fearless fierce in fury so you're not going to have if you're riding with him if you're in this company you won't be in your own righteousness this is his righteousness this is his army like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. You remember when the prophet prayed for the young man, God opened his eyes and he said the whole hillside was full of the chariots of fire, God's chariots, the horses, the angels. Be listening, people. The noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained and all faces shall gather blackness. They think they're going to overcome the lamb. Their faces of the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. The world has never seen an army like this and never will again to the years of many generations. You think you're going to be in that army? You think you're going to be a part of this people? If you're not ready, you got to let the word make you like himself. Amen? Fierce. Fearless. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone on his ways, on his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They're actually going to try to kill us. They're going to actually try to thrust us through. But it says they shall not be wounded. Amen. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall, speaking of Jerusalem. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. And the earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars withdraw their shining. Listen, folks. And the Lord, the one that searches the hearts, tries the reins, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? Amen. Praise God, people. Are you sure you're ready?
Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. I've been born.